that was a blessing. Uh, I'm uh, um, happy that you all are joining us uh, today. We are uh, going to be getting into the Word of God at this time. And uh, as I stated earlier, uh, I am I'm really excited about this message. Um, I think God has something very important that he wants to share uh, with his people. And um, we're going to just, we're going to have a word of prayer. And then we are going to jump into the message. Uh, I hope that you have your Bibles uh, because we are going to be, uh, we're going to be going deep into the word of God this morning. So uh, with that said, let's pray uh, and let's begin. Heavenly Father, we um, just take this time, Lord, to present uh, our hearts to you, um, asking, Lord, that you would please speak to us, Lord, that you would um, encourage us, strengthen us, Lord, that you would be truthful with our condition. And Lord, help us to see our great need which is Christ, which is the word of God. So bless us now, Lord, as we open your word, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The title of my message is Social Distancing, the Three Angels' Message, and the Right Arm of the Gospel. Social distancing, the three angels' messages, and the right arm of the gospel. Um, we are living in a time that is unlike anything we have seen in our lifetime. And um, I think that as a people, many of us are waking up to certain realities. Uh, if this is indeed um, a, a snapshot of what it will be like in the time of trouble, would we be ready? I think that's a question that a lot of people are asking. Would we be ready? And I think some people are answering that question, yes, uh, I would personally be ready. And others are saying, no, I find myself unprepared. But I want to speak to you today about, about something very, very specific. And, and it deals with the last part of my title, the, the, the right arm of the gospel. Because God has given this church a health message. And more than ever before, we need to be living up to that health message. I hope you, you can give me a hearty amen to that because that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Now, don't tune out, please. Don't, don't say to yourself, oh, I know the health message, so uh, this message is not for me. Just please hold on. We are living in a time right now where we have something that is precious to the world, but also precious to ourselves. If there was ever a time that we should be keeping the health message, that we should be living up to the health message, that time is now. All right? I want you to just keep that in the back of your mind. And I'm gonna, we're going to go to our first scripture. Uh, I want to invite you to look with me in the book of Psalm 33 and verse 1. And I'm just going to go ahead and forewarn you that uh, you're probably not going to... Uh, uh, why are we talking about Psalm 33, verse 1, when pastor is talking about the health message? I just want you to follow along and pay very close attention, okay? So Psalm 33, verse 1, the Bible tells us there, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right now, we are going through this social distancing uh, um, crisis, if you will. And it's very opposite of what Psalm 33 verse 1 is talking about, right? 
I can imagine that many of us are probably thinking back two, three weeks ago and remembering uh, that it wasn't so bad meeting in church after all, right? Uh, the Bible tells us how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Listen carefully. The purpose of the church, the purpose of the church, the church was raised up for the purpose of unity. I'm going to say that again. The church was raised up for the purpose of unity. It was raised up to be united and to unite. I want you to notice what John chapter 10, verse 16 and 17 says. John chapter 10, verse 16, rather. Jesus speaking says, Other sheep have I which are not of this fold. Them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be what? One fold and one shepherd. Jesus wanted unity for his church. He wanted his church to be so close. Listen carefully. He wanted his church to be so close together that they, were, that they would be considered one. Now, we're in a situation right now where we can't meet together as we used to, right? We've got this social, social distancing thing going on, but I think it's a perfect time to talk about the importance of unity in God's church. But let's keep building the foundation. I want you to notice with me Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is what? One body. And one spirit, even as you are called in one hope for, our, for your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So you see here this emphasis on unity in the church. The Bible says that we were to strive, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. Let me go ahead and take you over to John chapter 17. Jesus said these words, I am now, I now am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I am come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be what? One. That they may be one as we are one. Jesus wanted unity for the church in John chapter 17 verse 21 that these may all be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that thou may also be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me I have given to them that they may be what one even as we are one I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one listen carefully that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as, as thou hast loved them. So we're just building a foundation here and seeing how important oneness, unity, a closeness in the church of God, closeness, right? So close that we will be considered one. That's crazy, right? In this time of social distancing, I want you to notice what I'm talking about. God desires a unity for his church that basically makes them so close that they are one. Notice Romans chapter 12, verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members not, have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. So now, what we're seeing here is that the, the, the members of the church actually make up the body of Christ. All right, so please follow what I'm saying here because this 
is, this is very important, extremely important. God desires unity in his church, unity among the members, a unity that is so powerful, so close, that they would be considered one. Now, that one unity may be summarized as the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Okay? God desires for his body to be one. So now I just want you to imagine the church as the body of Christ, right? Head, arms, torso, legs, feet. The church, the members of the church are to be so closely united that they form one body, which is the body of Christ. What is the purpose of the body? So that's my question for you. What is the purpose of the body? Especially in these last days. Let me share with you Revelation chapter 14, a verse that you should all be familiar with. The Bible says, Revelation 14, verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. So the purpose of the unity, the purpose of the oneness of the body, is to take the gospel into all the world. If you're following so far, um, just a, a, a thumbs up, a, a, a heart, an amen, something. Okay? The purpose of the body of Christ is to take the gospel into all the world. Now, what is the purpose of the gospel? By the way, the power of the body of Christ is in its unity. Because unity signifies love. So therefore, the more united we are, the more powerful the message we take to the world, the everlasting gospel. Now, why are we taking the everlasting gospel to the world? Well, Jesus summed it up in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Notice what he says there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to who? The poor. And I want you to notice this next phrase. He has sent me to heal. He has sent me to heal, heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. In other words, guys, listen carefully. The gospel heals. I want you to catch that. The gospel is designed to heal us from the wounds of sin. We have a message to take to the world. That message is taken to the world through the body of Christ, which, wh whose power is through its unity. And the message we have is a healing message. A healing message. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you... Um, would, uh, I can't even ask a question yet because I'm just going to give it away. Let me just say it this way. The power of the message of God's people depends upon the unity of God's people. The, the, the social closeness. Not the social, the social closeness of God's people determines the power whereby we take the gospel into the, into the whole world. Now remember, we're taking the gospel into the world because that gospel is a healing message. And in fact, one of our favorite verses about God's end time movement is found in Isaiah 58 verse 12. And here's what it says. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. That's what the gospel is all about. It's about repairing the breach. It's about bringing wholeness. It's about bringing healing to sin-sick souls. 
we are called to be repairers of the breach. We love this verse, Isaiah 58, verse 12. How many of you love this verse? Raise your hand in your homes. I know we can't see you, but just amen. I love that verse. But there's something that happens before that verse. You see, Isaiah 58 is not a very flattering chapter for us. I want you to notice this. Check this out. In Isaiah 58, verse 8, look at what the Bible says, okay? I hope you're sitting down. I hope, you are ab I hope you're about to catch what I'm about to tell you. Because in Isaiah 58, the Bible says here, in the same promise for God's end time people, you know, the repairs of the breach, it says, then shall thy light break forth. Now pause for a second. Then. Well, whatever that then is, it means something is going to happen that then shall our light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Rare reward. Now, I have a question for you. If your health has to spring forth, what does that indicate? Remember, we're talking about God's end time people, the repairers of the breach, right? Those who are going to take the message uh, to the whole world at the end of time, they are going to be called repairers of the breach. But just a few verses up, we read that at some point, this group of people, their light will spring forth and their health shall spring forth speedily. What does that mean? If I am healthy then there's no need for my health to spring forth speedily. I hope, I hope you catch what I just said. The only reason I would want my health to spring forth speedily is if I'm sick. What is God trying to say to us? Listen carefully. The people of Isaiah 58, the repairs of the breach, who are supposed to go forth with this end time message, repairing the breach, restoring the past to dwelling, God says that at some point, this body, the health of this body is going to spring forth. Meaning, the body, prior to this time, was experiencing sickness. Oh... Wait a minute. Sick? Us? The body? No, 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 no. We're the remnant. What are you talking about sick? Well, God said it right here. God says that at some point, the church's health will spring forth speedily, indicating that before this point, the church is unhealthy. And I'm asking you today, do you, are you beginning to, to understand what I'm saying? Because what the Bible is telling us is this. Listen carefully. If we are supposed to be going forward to the world with a message of healing, how can we have any effectiveness in preaching that message if the body itself is sick? How can we go forward with a message of healing if the church itself is sick? Our health needs to spring forth speedily before we become repairers of the breach. Are you catching what I'm saying? So I know what you're asking right now. Wait a minute. Is the body sick? Like, what are you talking about? Remember, listen carefully. Remember, the strength of the body is the unity within the body. A unified body is a strong and healthy body. Oh, 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 oh boy. A unified body, a body which endeavors to keep the bond of peace, of love, a unified body is a healthy body. It's a body that can go forth in power, bringing a message to the world of healing. Why? Because the body itself is healthy. The church itself is healthy. However, if the, if the body becomes compromised, let me ask you this. Speaking about your personal health, 
What is the thing that you want to take care of the most? What is the thing that defends your body? It's called your what? Your what system? It's called your immune system, right? Your immune system is what keeps the body healthy. Healthy immune system, healthy body. Not so healthy immune system, not so healthy body. All right, guys, I need you to check this out. Notice with me in Acts chapter 20, verse 29. How many of you know what the killer T cells are? Yes, 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 you know what those are, right? The killer T cells are part of the immune system whose purpose it is to identify, isolate, and destroy foreign invaders into the body. So how many of you praise God that we are fearfully and wonderfully made? Amen. That's right. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, praise God. And God has given us an immune system. And beloved, it's the same for the church body. The church body was given an immune system. I hope you are following me here. The church body in order to remain healthy, had to be given an immune system. And I want you to check it out. The immune system was designed to watch for invaders into the body that could cause pathogens and cause uh, 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 foreign things to come into the body that would cause the body to be sick. So, for example, in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Paul says these words, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Watch. Watch for the body. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Pause for a second. Was Paul here warning that there were going to be invaders in the body of Christ? Yes, he was. And what he was saying was, I need you to be the immune system. I need you to look out for, for false things that will come into the body and compromise the health of the body. Listen, church, we have a health message and now more than ever, we need to be living by that health message. I hope you're catching what I'm saying. So Paul said, listen, I need you to be vigilant. You know what? There's nothing more, there's nothing more amazing than an immune system that works effectively. Paul said, I need you to look out for the body because Satan is going to try to make the body sick. And if the body becomes sick, it's going to be ineffective in doing what the body has been called to do, which is to go out into the world and preach the everlasting gospel to all the world, a gospel of healing. All right. So, Check it out. What were these people going to do who entered into the flock? They would seek to draw away, or let me put it this way. They would seek to draw away people from Christ. Or, let me rephrase it this way. They would seek to create social distancing from Jesus. And ultimately, from the body of Christ. Division, if the strength of the body is unity, if the strength of the body is unity, the strength of the body of Christ, then Satan understands that the way to weaken the body of Christ, come on guys, is to create social or spiritual distancing from Jesus Christ. Because once we begin to distance ourselves from Jesus Christ, we also begin to distance ourselves from one another. 
All right, I hope you're catching this, guys. Check this out. Once again, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, whom, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? For the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You get the idea. Paul is saying, listen, I need you to be the immune system for the body. I need you, everybody, everybody who is a part of the body of Christ should be looking out for the health and the well-being of the body of Christ. Beloved, we have a health message and now more than ever, we ought to be living up to that health message. So you're saying, Pastor, what are you trying to say here? Well, listen carefully what I'm trying to say, because did you know that the immune system can actually malfunction? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The immune system can actually malfunction. What do you mean? It can either become hypervigilant or it can become dormant. Listen. When the immune system becomes overactive, it attacks the body. It is unable to differentiate between foreign invaders and the body itself. Listen carefully, guys. Its fear of infection leads it to destroy the body. Let me say it this way. Its overzealous desire for purity and wholeness blinds it to the body and it begins to divide and to isolate that which should not be divided and isolated. Are you catching what I'm saying? Could it be that the enemy of souls seeks to weaken the body by causing the immune system of the body to become overactive. Pastor, what do you mean? Come with me. Isaiah 58. Same chapter, right? I want you to notice what Isaiah 58 says. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. This is the same chapter, Isaiah 58, that ends with, they shall be called repairs of the breach. It begins with, show my people their sins. You can't be a repairer of the breach. You got to first recognize your sins. You got to first recognize there's something you're doing that is bringing sickness in the body. Does Isaiah 58 go on to tell us what that is? Yes, it does, guys. Please listen carefully. Isaiah 58, verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fasting, you fast for pleasure and exact all your labors. Notice verse 4. But you fast for what? You fast for strife and debate, and to smite the fist of wickedness. What is God saying here? You, you are not seeking unity in the body. You are seeking strife. You are seeking debate. The body is experiencing division. You can't be a repairer of the breach until you first recognize the division happening in the body. I, I am speaking as straight as I can right now. Let, let, let's go a little further. Let's check out verse 9. Because the Bible says, verse 9, remember this. Bible saying in Isaiah 58, these are the things you're doing, but if you change, then you will be repairs of the breach. Then your light will spring forth. Then your health will spring forth. What are we talking about? The health of of the body of the church. God is telling us we're sick right now. How do we know we're sick? Because there's division happening in the body. The immune system of the body is not operating correctly. Remember, there are two things that can happen with the immune system. It can either become overzealous 
or it can become inactive. Hmm. Hmm. Inactive means, hey, we're going to let whatever into the body. Overzealous means everything is evil. You know where those cameras came from? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about the TVs lately? Everything becomes evil. And beloved, either one of these approaches makes the body sick because it brings in division and strife and, 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 and a, a, a suspicion and all kinds of things designed to make the body weak. If there is no immune system, sickness enters the body. And when you're sick, you don't feel like going into all the world. Hmm. Check this out. I read Isaiah 58 verse 9. I even read the text. Listen to what it says. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Listen carefully. If you take away from the midst of thee the yoke and the putting forth of the finger. Pause for a second. What do you think it means, putting forth of the finger? What's God saying here? You guys need to stop putting forth the finger. What, is that, what do you think that means? You, I'm sure you're getting this right now. What does putting forth the finger mean? You're pointing. Look at what so-and-so is doing. Look at what that one... You become an accuser of the... That's what putting forth of the finger means. It means accusing the brethren. You get to the place where in the church of God, people are so busy accusing one another in the name of the immune system that the body begins to become sick and cannot accomplish its mission. After all, how can we go out there and tell the world about a message of healing when the body itself is sick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to see this. You're saying, Pastor, where is this? What, what, what? Tell me about this division. I, I don't need to tell you, but let's talk about it. Right? If, think about how much division hap is happening in our church right now over doctrinal issues. Come on, man. I just want you to think about that, right? Just think about uh, what is your interpretation of prophecy and what is your interpretation of, oh, that interpretation of prophecy where you think uh, the king of the south is this power versus this power, you're an apostasy, you're evil, you're a tear, and that's what happens. Like, we don't know how to disagree without being disagreeable. We don't know how to disagree over a subject. What do you believe about this issue? What do you believe about that issue? We, you take a side and you are the apostate. Beloved, listen to me. We need to learn how to disagree with a position without demonizing other people. Because when we make other people the enemy, the immune system is attacking the wrong thing. We're attacking the, a part of the body versus dealing with the issue that is coming into the body. It's okay to disagree. I'm not saying that everyone you know, has to believe this way about you know, the book of Revelation or the book of Daniel or this or that or what. It's okay to have a difference of opinion and that opinion may be totally wrong. But beloved, if we don't know how to love each other in spite of our differences, we are being hypocritical about this message of healing that we're talking about. See, not only doctrinal issues, not only, uh, 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 you know, mundane issues, issues that shouldn't be dividing at all. What about hate in the church? What about racism in the church? Didn't think I was going to say it, did you? Yes, I said it. 
What about racism in the church? Listen to me, beloved. There are a lot of people in the church who are racist and don't even know it. Peter was a racist and didn't even know it. And guys, listen, you don't have to be one color to be racist. There is racism happening in a lot of different ways in the church. Underhanded racism. And listen, that's why the Bible says, search your heart. Lord, search my heart and show me what's in my heart. Because sometimes you don't even know what's in your heart. And beloved, these things are causing division in the church. The most obvious one, what are you? Conservative. Conservative. What are you? Liberal. You're a liberal? You're an, you're an apostate. You're conservative? You're an apostate. And so what do we do? We socially distance. <laughs> Beloved, Satan is trying. Satan has had us socially distancing before it became a thing to, be so, to practice social distancing. We've been social distancing. What do you believe? All right. We're not going to invite you to our church to speak. Ministries that are supposed to be reflecting the unity of Christ and underhandedly, yeah, 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 no, we're not inviting that person. No, we're not inviting that person. <clears throat> you guys, really? Really? If the leaders of the church can't demonstrate true love and brotherly, sisterly courtesy. How are the, how are the members of the church going to follow? How are they going to rise any higher? If ministries are vying for, oh, who's better and who's better, and yeah, we're not invite them. And guys, I'm going to tell you, this is happening in ministries. This is happening in ministries all over. It's hypocritical. I'm not saying... You know, again, I'm not saying you have to uh, agree with it. I'm simply saying, I'm simply saying that if we don't know how to love one another, if we don't know how to guard one another's reputations, even if we believe, listen, I have a, a, I have a dear, fr I have dear friends who, who, you know, have gone off into some things and you know what, I'm a, I'm a public figure, I could have easily gone on Facebook and been like, yep, yeah, boom, 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 boom. And you know, nope, mm-mm, no. You want to know why? Because those are my friends. And if I'm going to correct them, I'm going to correct them privately. I'm going to talk to them privately because I wouldn't do that if it was my brother, if it was my mother or father. If they were doing it, I wouldn't be going and, you know, blasting them. And guess what? We, in these days, we have no qualms about getting on Facebook, getting on social media, and airing just how sick the body of Christ is. The church. You understand what I mean when I say the body of Christ. Peter. Peter. Social distancing. Yeah, you remember Galatians 2.11? Paul says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came, certain came from James, he did eat with Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. You know how it is. You don't want to hang out with certain people because you're afraid what other people might say. Even though you might like that person, you just don't want to be seen around them or connect with them or have your ministry connect with them because what might your followers or your supporters of your ministry say if? We have produced an atmosphere, an environment of social distancing that is sickening the body of Christ and we need to stop it. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not talking about the social distancing that we have to do now on a physical level. That's not, I'm talking about social distancing on a spiritual level. We are separating, and remember, the, the power of the body of Christ is in its unity, but if 
we continue this social distancing, you know, between black Adventism and white Adventism and conservative and liberal and or are you a Republican or are you a Democrat and how could you? And all this stuff going on, what ends up happening, beloved, is that we become so sick that we cannot accomplish our mission because everybody becomes suspect. We're turning on everybody, yup, he's suspect, she's suspect, they're suspect, and only the people that I'm cool with are really, really, really doing the Lord's work. You see where this, go where this is going. So, in one instance, the immune system becomes overactive. Everything is wrong, everything is evil, everyone is evil, and only you, only your ministry, only your church, only your group of friends, only you are the ones that have not bowed the knee to Baal. That's a hyper, that's, that, those are signs of a hyper immune system that is actually destroying the body. You can no longer differentiate between the body and the actual illness entering into the body. On the other hand, you have the failure of the immune system, which says, hey, whatever goes. So it doesn't matter. We can't get sick. Body of Christ is cool. So whatever goes, goes. Beloved, neither of those is healthy. When the body is sick, the gospel cannot go forth with power. How can it? How can we call others to unity when we're not experiencing unity in the church ourselves? How can we bring a message of healing when we are still sick? But God has not left the church without hope. If anyone knows how to heal, it's the Adventist church. Like somebody needs to say amen to that. If anyone knows the secret to building a healthy immune system, a healthy body, if anyone knows how to combat disease, it's the Adventist church. And why do I say that? Because you know it, guys. We, listen. We need a new start. We got a health message, don't we? We have a health message that can heal. So if we have a health message that can heal and the body is sick, man, why don't we just apply the health message to the body? so that we can get healed and we can have a new start. How many of you would like a new start? I think so. I think you're looking for a new start. I think you see the church needs a new start. I think you see that there is so much division and animosity. And you know what? A lot of you are disappointed that the GC is not happening this year because you were looking forward to a good fight. Yes, you were, weren't you? You were just waiting to see what's going to happen at the GC this year. You were looking for the fight. You guys, this is just a sign of how sick the body has become and how much we need to be healed. So we have what's called New Start. You know what it is, right? Nutrition, exercise, water. Huh? Come on, you fill it in. What else? Sunshine, temperance, fresh air, rest, and trust in God. So let's go through it. We're just, we're just gonna see how can we apply the health, how can we as a church begin to practice the health message? Well, let's start with nutrition, guys. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. If you want a healthy immune system to protect the body of Christ, it's all about nutrition. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Beloved, we need to take the word of God seriously. We need to stop putting the word of God on the shelf. We need to take the word of God seriously because in the word of God are life-giving nutrients that are going to help the body become better, help the body heal, because the body can heal itself. All you have to do is give it the right fuel. And for many of us, we're not giving it the right fuel. We're eating junk food. We're not eating the word of God. 
So God is telling us, listen, if you want to be repairers of the breach and, and have your health spring forth, you need to stop fighting among yourselves and you need to start getting into the word of God. Amen. The word of God, isn't, it's all about nutrition, 2 Peter 1.19. We also have a more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. We have prophecy that we could be eating, guys. It's a sweet book. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. We got to start getting to the word of God. We got to stop taking it light. We got to stop, you know, like just wanting messages that make us feel good about ourselves. We need, listen, especially now we need to be getting deeper into the prophecy so we can understand. You know, I know there's so many of us that don't even know, like, are we in the end time? What's going on? I have no clue. What, what is it in Revelation? We shouldn't be acting like this. Of all the people on the planet, we should be the ones that are like, look, here's where we are in the book of Revelation. Here's what's coming. But the fact that so many of us are asking the question, it, is this the abomination of desolation standing in the hole? Is it, it reveals why we are sick. Nutrition, 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 guys. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And beloved, listen to me. Uh, uh, nutrition, yes, nutrition. Eat the word. But you know what? We are, we are very close to the end, guys. And I would say that there's only so much you could eat at one time. So I'm going to suggest juicing the word. Yes, yeah, we need to juice the word. When you're really sick and you really need that dose, juice the word. Yes, take in more than you normally would. Because it's going to bring healing. It's going to give you strength and power. Okay, so that's nutrition. What about the next one? E for exercise. Exercise. Guys, we need to start exercising. Second Timothy or 1 Timothy 4, 7 says, Refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Guys, we need to start exercising exercising godliness instead of pointing fingers and instead of looking at everyone as the enemy and instead of uh, uh, doing the stuff that's bringing about sickness and disease let's start learning how to exercise godliness not just talk about it but actually exercise it look at what god says in jeremiah 9 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that i am the lord which exercises loving kindness guys let's start exercising loving kindness right exercising loving kindness to those who may not be so kind back to us let's start exercising loving kindness and and and, and righteous judgment not selfish judgment and righteousness in the earth because that's what God exercises let's learn let's get let's let's get up and start exercise. move move in godliness right how about Hebrews 12 1 Hebrews 12 1 talks about weightlifting yeah weightlifting weightlifting is a good exercise so, so it says here, wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a, a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Ooh, come on, somebody. <laughs> let, let's lay aside that. Let's, let's, let's learn how to move weight, the weight that so easily besets us. Let's learn how to run a little bit. Let's, let's go running. Let's go jog every day. Run that race. Lift that weight. God is calling us to get on a weight loss program. Yeah, you need to lose some weight. Uh, yes, I said it. You need to lose some weight. Why? Because many of us are carrying around the weight of unforgiveness, the weight of bitterness, the weight of jealousy, the weight of, of, of suspicion. That's what we're doing. So we're so heavy that we can't exercise. We can't run the race. Because we're busy looking at everybody else. Guys, listen to me. Like, I've experienced this, okay? So, I have been here. 
It's easy to look at what others are doing and say, oh yeah, evil, and oh yeah, evil, and oh yeah, evil. It's easy to do that. It's not so easy to look at yourself. God is saying, you be your own immune system. Look at yourself. Let the others worry about them. Let them work. Every man work out their trembling, their salvation with trembling and fear. And if you're going to try to help somebody else, try to help them, not condemn them or hate them, but try to help them. What they may be doing may be totally wrong. That's not the argument I'm presenting here, right? I'm not saying like, hey, it doesn't matter. I'm just simply saying we need to learn how to handle our differences. We need to learn how to handle when someone doesn't believe as we do. We need to learn how to love those who, may, who we may disagree with on certain doctrines. Yes, 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 beloved. We need to learn how to exercise. Okay, not only there's, 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 there's nutrition, there's exercise, and there's also water, right? Water, the W in New Start. Water. Why is what? Get plenty of water. That's a, that's a known health principle for us. Genesis or Acts chapter 3, 19 tells us this. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of what? Refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. This was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit symbolized as the outpouring of the latter rain. The reason why water is so important, beloved, is because it helps us to hydrate. And many of us are dehydrated. We don't have no spirit in us. <laughs> no spirit. We're dehydrated. You need that water of the spirit. You need that outpouring of the spirit in your life so that it'll hydrate your cells and you'll be filled with the spirit. Galatians 5.16 says this. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in the water you have taken in and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It goes on to say, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Beloved, in order for fruit to grow, there has to be water. You got to water the fruit. Hydrate. Drink that water, and the fruit of the Spirit will be the result. And then you can exercise that fruit of the Spirit on people that you disagree with. So that we won't have division in the body that causes it to be weak. Not only is water used for the purpose of hydrating, we got a whole bunch of dehydrated Christians because they are not saturated with the Holy Spirit. They're not hydrated with the Spirit. But listen, water is also used to purify. Now, we ought to know this, right? If the church wants to be healthy... If you want to avoid viruses getting into the body, wash your hands. I'm just getting excited. Wash your hands. James chapter 4, 8 says this. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Wash your hands because you know the hands are one of the most... Uh, 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 efficient ways to spread viruses. Wash your hands. Make sure you have clean hands. He's saying, Pastor, clean hands. Expound. Well, listen. In Isaiah 59, verse 2, the Bible says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your hands are defiled with blood. And your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has muttered perverse things. They go together, hand and tongue. So God says your hands are full of blood. Well, I've never killed anyone. Oh, wait a minute. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. Oh, man. I just need to, like, spin in my chair or something. <laughs> if you hate someone, okay, and you know, Sometimes I hear people say, I don't hate you, I just don't like you, which means I hate you. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be cute with it. Don't be cute with it. I don't like you. And the Bible says, if you hate your brother, you have blood on your hands. Your hands are filthy. Your hands are not clean. And what's happening is, listen carefully, you are, you are spreading disease in the body. 
because you're going to use those bloody hands and shake someone else's hand. And that person's like, yeah, I don't like that person either. And then they go, and what happens is, instead of going to one person only, the person you may have an issue with, and, and, and isolating, did you hear what I said? Isolating, socially isolating that virus so that it's just between you and the individual. Matthew 18, go to that individual alone. No, 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 no. You go and go infect someone else and someone else and someone else. And what happens is that this pandemic of hate... This pandemic of suspicion, this pandemic of, of I don't like you, just spreads through the church. You heard what Pastor So-and-so said. You heard what Elder So-and-so said. You heard what they said at the GC. You heard what the, this ministry. And this pandemic spreads to where everybody, almost everyone is infected. Hmm. Infected with the virus of hate. Yeah. Proverbs 79. He that covereth a transgression seeks love, but he that repeateth the matter separates friends, causes social distancing. This is how people spread. This is how viruses of hate and jealousy spread. When you carry that virus of hate and you don't wash your hands and wash them frequently, Wash your hands, guys. That's water. Wash your hands. Okay. Sunshine. We know that the health message tells us we need to get plenty of sunshine. Mm -hmm. We need to just bask in the sun. Are you catching what I'm saying? We need to bask in the sun. Yeah, Malachi 4.2 tells us that. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and he shall go forth and you shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. You need to get some, get out, man. Get some sun. Don't be a pale Christian. Get some sun. Because when you get sun, listen, listen, listen to what the Bible says about the sun. You have heard that it's been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just. And get some sun. Because when you get some sun, you can give other sun. Right? You can be sunshine to others. Instead of being darkness to them, instead of I hate you, you can be sunshine. Listen, man, I don't agree with your theology, but I love you as a brother, and I will pray with you, and I will love you. I don't agree with your stance on this or your stance on that. Matt, listen to me. Like, do you know how much division is being caused by people just... I don't like the way you interpreted that scripture, or I don't even like the way you study the Bible. I don't like the way you preach your sermon. So we're not going to invite you because I didn't see what you saw in that sermon. So you know what? Yeah, we're just not going to. Yeah, mm -mm. you guys, come on. Seriously? Seriously. We are not the Holy Spirit. Let your sun shine. The Bible says, let your light so shine that others may see your, your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Get out into the sun. That's going to help the body become healthy. Okay, so we got nutrition, exercise, water. We got sunshine. Uh, uh, what about temperance? Temperance. That's self-control. What, what does God want us to control? He wants us to control the tongue. That, he says you control the tongue, you can control everything else. James 1.26, if a man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, that man's religion is vain. So just as in the literal uh, uh, issue of temperance, we're trying to control what we eat and not eat so much, not overeat. In the spiritual context, we need temperance. Control your tongue. Stop gossiping. Stop talking about people. Stop repeating. Stop spreading. Stop those things. Control your tongue because what's happening is you, when you control your tongue, the virus can't spread in the body. But no, 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 no. What we do is we go out into the gossip stores. Hey, yo, guess what? Oh, and we just poison people against people. That's all we're doing. 
and the virus just spreads and spreads and spreads. You control the tongue and the virus, at least you do your part in helping to kill the virus, the virus of sin. All right, so we got temperance. What's, the, what's next? We got air, fresh air. We have to get lots of air, guys. We need fresh wind, fresh air. John 3, 8, the Bible says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Beloved, we need the fresh air of the Holy Spirit. We are told that prayer is the breath of the soul. I think my Instagram feed uh, uh, just died, so if you're on Instagram, I apologize. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can get it, get it started up again. Listen, prayer is the breath of the soul. If we don't know how to pray together, don't expect to be healed together. There's a re the way you can tell the church is sick is just look at our prayer meetings. <laughs> Just look at our prayer meetings. The lungs of the church are almost, they are filled with, with, with sickly fluid. So we don't even pray together. We just, hey, I'm not, go no, pray, no. Why not? Because I don't like that person. Or just because I'm just too busy to pray. We need fresh air. Look at our prayer meetings and you can tell that the virus of social distancing is attacking the lungs and robbing it of much needed air. You guys, we need sunshine, we need temperance, we need air, and listen carefully, you know what comes next, right? Rest. We need rest. Get some rest, guys. Get lots of rest. If I could, could encourage you to do one thing above every other, it would be get lots of rest. And the question is, how does the body get rest? Jesus told us in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, come unto me, all, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Yes, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your souls. Do you know that the body heals itself when it's getting rest? <laughs> the body heals itself when it's getting rest. So Jesus tells us, if you want to get healed, you need to rest. How do we rest, Lord? Come to me. Come to you. We, I don't get it. What does that mean? Listen. Check this out. Listen to this statement, guys. The cause of division and discord in families and in the church is, I'm going to change this word here, social distancing from Christ. Watch this. To come near to Christ is to come near to one another. The secret of true unity in the church and in the family is not diplomacy, not management, not a superhuman effort to overcome difficulties, though there will be much of this to do. So we're not minimizing there's going to be work and it's going to be a challenge. But the true answer is union with Christ. And now check out this example that is used. Picture a large circle from the edge of which are many lines all running to the center. The nearer these lines approach the center, the nearer they are to one another. Thus it is in the Christian life, the closer we come to Christ, the nearer we shall be to one another. God is glorified as his people unite in a harmonious action. Do you catch this? Rest means coming to Christ. The closer we come to Christ, the closer we come to each other. We're not fighting each other. We're coming close to Christ and we begin to unify. That's what it means to rest, you guys. And finally, trust. Trust in God. Trust that God has his church under control. Trust him and obey him. Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Beloved, if we do these things, we can rebuild a healthy immune system, one that is not overactive, one that is not 
inactive, but one that will allow the body to be one. And when the body is one, we can go and complete the mission that God has called. We can then become repairers of the breach. You guys, we have a health message. We need to follow it. We need to follow it. Yeah, 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 you may be following it on a personal level for your physical health, but as a church body, we need a new start. We need a reset. And the health message is the answer. Huh. <laughs> Who would have thought? All right, guys, listen. I, I, I need to share this with you, okay? Because you see, many of us, here's what you're saying right now. You're saying, listen, I don't want to be around this person or that person because I am fearful of being contaminated by them. That should not be a fear of yours in the church. Here's why. Because God has instructed us to wear protective gear. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. God has given us protective gear that if we wear it, we don't have to worry about contamination by coming into contact with others who may not be serious about following God at that point in their walk. You say, Pastor, what's that protective gear? Listen carefully. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able, be able to stand uh, in the evil day and having done all to stand, Stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery viruses of the wicked and take your N95 mask of salvation. All right, it doesn't say that. But take the helmet of salvation. That's going to protect your head. That's going to protect any virus from entering into your eyes or your nose or your mouth. It's going to protect you. Take that and, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying with all prayer and supplication. God says, I am giving you so much protection that you will not need to fear. If we're afraid to go around people, if we're afraid to be, it's because we're not wearing the armor. We're not wearing the protective gear. Now, I'm about to wrap this up, but this is, a, listen, what I'm about to share is the most important thing that I've shared thus far in this message, and I need you to listen closely. I need you to listen carefully, because God's trying to heal us so that we can do something mighty, and if we're not healed, we're not going to be able to do what God has called us to do, so the good news is we're going to be healed, because the Bible prophesies it question is, will you be a part of the body when it's healed, or will you be somewhere outside the body? Will you be one of those viruses, end up being so connected with a virus that when the time for the body is totally healed, you have been removed from the body? Check this out, guys. Isaiah 40, 31, a text we all know and love. They that wait upon the Lord <clears throat> shall do what? Renew their strength. Guys, I'll be done in five minutes, okay? So just... I don't even know how long I've been preaching. I think I got caught up in what I was saying, but just give me five more minutes, okay? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This verse is talking about healing. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The sick are weak. God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And when their strength is renewed, what are they going to do? They're going to mount up with wings as eagles. That's powerful, guys. You need to catch this. If they are sick, they have no strength. And if they have no strength, they can't mount up. All right, Pastor, where are you going with this? Listen, that word, but they, the term, but they that wait, listen to how Strong's Concordance describes this word. It means, it's a primitive root, which means to bind together. Ho, ho, ho. To bind together 
perhaps by twisting, that is to collect, figuratively to expect, to gather together, to look patiently, tarry, wait. So the reason, it doesn't say, but he that waits on the Lord. It says, but they that wait on the Lord. In other words, they're waiting together. They're moving together. They that together wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The secret to the renewing of their strength is that they're doing it together. Mm, mm, wait, wait, wait. That same word is used in Genesis 1.9. First time it's used. And God said, let, let the waters under the heavens be gathered. Same, same Hebrew word. Be gathered together onto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so. So the word means to gather, together. They, that together wait upon the Lord. What's going to happen to them? They're going to renew their strength. And when they renew their strength, they mount up with wings like, where do they mount up to? According to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love already loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has he quickened together with Christ, by grace are you saved, listen carefully, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How do they get up there? With eagle's wings. They get up there because they mount up. They waited on the Lord. And when we do this together as a body, we're invited into heavenly places. Watch this, guys. Listen carefully. The key to flight, to being able to remain in heavenly places, is unity. I hope you're catching this, guys. The key to flight, to mounting up with wings like eagles, is unity. It has to be done together. It has to be done together. Remember in Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, how the woman in the dark ages, remember that woman? Remember her? What does the Bible say about her? Come on, let's look. Let's look. It says, to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. Even though the woman in the dark ages, even though Satan was trying to scatter her, listen carefully, she was given wings of an eagle because the church of the dark ages, the woman of the dark ages, was a united church. That's why she could mount up with wings like eagles. They were united in the Lord. <laughs> the power of flight lay in the degree of unity in the church. Now I got a question for you that I actually never asked myself until today, until last night when I was putting this together. And here's a question. What happened to that woman? Right? Obviously, that woman in, in that time period is, is no longer here. That was the Dark Ages. But what ultimately happened with that woman? Right? We look at that woman and we say that woman represents the Church of the Dark Ages. It represents the Protestant Reformation. But check this out. <clears throat> what happened? What began to happen in the Protestant Reformation? Did they begin to divide? Did they begin to practice social distancing? Gonna wait. <laughs> you see, once Satan could get into the church and start to divide them, oh yeah, we believe this. Oh yeah, you believe that. Oh, you believe that. You believe. And once these divisions started happening, that became the basis for the multiplication. Listen carefully, the multiplication of all these churches, which are now known as Mystery Babylon, because they never completed. A reformation. Why? Because division began to rise inside these very movements. Pastor, where are you going with this? You guys need to see this. In Isaiah 58, verse 14, the Bible says, listen carefully, that same chapter we began with, Isaiah 58, right? Listen, 
Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. When you, when you are healed, when all these things happen, you do this the right way. When you stop fighting, when you stop dividing, then shall you delight yourself in the Lord. And I, watch this, guys. Whew, I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. What do you think he means when he says ride upon the high places? places of the earth. Well, let me just share with you. He uses the same word. The same word is used in Psalm 1810. And he, that is God, rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. So what does it mean to ride upon the high places? It means to mount up with wings like eagles. So now he's telling us when we are united, when we stop fighting, you're going to have power to mount up. To mount up where? To mount up into heaven. Why do we need to mount up into heaven? Listen, guys. To fly, you have to wait on the Lord. Meaning, the church must be unified. Meaning, the church must be healthy in order to fly. Why am I talking about flying? Why? 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 Why am I talking about why am I talking about the church? Listen, guys, in Revelation 14, 6, the Bible says, I saw another angel fly. Fly in the midst of heaven. Having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on, every, on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Listen, guys, we're not flying. If we are sick, we're not strong enough to mount up and to actually fly in the heavens as the prophecy states so that we can finish the work. Because to fly represents swiftness. To fly represents a, a, a quick work. But something's happening. I, I can't say that we're flying. Have we yet mounted up? Have we yet? Are we riding up on the high places? Yeah, the gospel is going forth. But beloved, we could be doing this much faster if the church was actually healthy. We could actually mount up like, wing, or like eagles, mount up on eagles' wings and finish the gospel rapidly. But we're sick. And if we're sick, we can't really mount up and fly the way God wants us to fly. It's time to abide by the health message, guys. That's my appeal to you. You want to fly? Do you want to fly? The church in the dark ages had wings. We need wings too. Because that angel doesn't represent a real angel flying. It represents the people of God. They are the ones that are flying. The church of God. The body of Christ. They are the ones that are flying. So if we want to fly, we got to mount up with wings like eagles. But if we want to mount up with wings like, uh, if we want to mount up on wings like eagles, we have to do it unitedly. And unity is the strength of the body of Christ. Division is the weakness of the body of Christ. So you can either be a part of the problem or you can be a part of the solution. We need to pray, Lord, help us to get rid of this division. Help us to get rid of this division. Help us to get rid of the racism in this church. Help us to get rid of the division. Help us to get rid of the sides. Help us to get rid of the teams. Help us to get rid of everything that separates us. And it's hard because I know you got people looking at you. And, and, and if you try to make that first step to be the one that says, hey, I'm going to reach my hand across. and let, You know, you, yeah, others are going to look at you like, what? You, you did what? You hung out with who? Guys, let's abolish social distancing in the church. You get what I'm saying? Let's abolish this attitude of separation within amongst ourselves. And if we do that right, the gospel will go around the world rapidly and the end will come. If that's your desire, I'm just going to ask you to say amen, to lift your hands, to do whatever you need to do to say, Lord, that's me. That's me. 
Help me, Lord, no longer to be a part. Or help me not to spread these viruses going around in the church. Help me to just help. Help me to just, uh, nope, not spreading it. I'll wash my hands. I'll abide by the health message. I will do everything I need to do to cause the virus of separation and jealousy and hatred and anger in the church to die. Because when it does, we can be about our father's business. We can go back to work. We can go back to work. I want to go back to work. The church needs to get back to work. We do. We do. Let's do it, guys. Jackie, please lead us. I'll come back after you and pray. As we, um, as we prepare to pray, uh, I want you to realize something. If the body of Christ is sick, the people that we try to go to, they see that sickness and they stay away from the body. Nobody wants to be around somebody that's sick. We go out into the world and we present the gospel, but people are saying, wait a minute, your church is sick. What's the message we're sending? Let's get healed. Let's learn to love one another. And then they will know us by our love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us. Lord, we pray that you forgive us for ignoring the very message you gave us to give us good health. In ignoring that message, in ignoring nutrition, and in, in ignoring exercise and water and, 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 and sunshine and temperance and air and rest and trusting God, and in ignoring these things, Lord, we have compromised the immune system and allowed sickness to enter the body causing division now lord we have prayed for forgiveness we're now asking that as a body you would help us to adopt the health message that we may have a new start 
that we may reset, bring healing to the body, Lord. Remove everything that is unlike you. And most of all, Lord, we pray that you would bring unity into the body of Christ. May that unity lead to our strength and lead to us mounting up into heavenly places that we may fly unimpeded around this world to spread the three angels' messages. Grant us our wings, Lord, that we may finish the work. Thank you, Lord, for being merciful to us. Fill us with your presence is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.